So before we even begin doing this on any of our photographs, I have to explain the stuff that I just explained, okay, in a way that we can all understand it, <clears throat> which is sometimes the most difficult part. <laughs> so here we have the luminance value of pixels. So zero being black, 255 being white, and 128 in the middle being your midtones, okay? These numbers, 287, they're just arbitrary numbers to show you that somewhere in between zero and 128 lives another, another value of a pixel. Now, these pixel values from 0 to 255, that's a concept that we think about in terms of a pixel. A pixel can only be anywhere from 0 to 255. If it's below 0, it's basically non-existent data. If it's above 255, it's basically non-existent data. That's where you get the clipping warnings and the highlight blowout warnings where it's like, me, 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 you're going above 255, stop. Um, 0 to 255, it also exists in colors. Your red color, your green, and blue. So to make any color, you need some combination of RGB or CMY that involve 0 to 255, okay? So every pixel essentially has that 0 to 255 value to it. And that's essentially how we create these luminosity maps is from the existence of luminosity. So by default, the, the traditional luminosity mask is going to select anything that has a luminance value. So if it is at 0, is it going to be selected? No, because there's nothing there. But what gets selected and how that gets selected transitions from 0 to 255. So areas of your image that are actually in this portion of the graph, so to speak, will be a more robust version of the mask. So typically when we paint a mask on our image, we paint with black and we paint with white, correct? Well, when you're painting with that white, it's, it doesn't do what things like Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom do, where if it senses a pixel that's a value that you didn't start with, then it's going to go, you know, the auto mask feature. We don't have that in Photoshop. This is essentially taking that concept of the auto mask and bringing it into Photoshop, taking the concept of the auto mask that's in the brushes and the local adjustments right into Photoshop. So to do this, we have to step into the world of channels. Okay, how many people play in channels? Okay, we got a couple here that are not afraid to go into the depths of channels. I'll be honest with you, I don't play too much in, in channels. I just, it's just not really where I, where I do things, but that's okay. So if you look at channels, if we had any colors in here, it would show you what the red channel would look like, the green channel would look like, and the blue channel would look like within what actually looks like what? A mask, right? So this RGB channel, this RGB channel is actually, we can just rename it right off the bat, luminance. Okay, because that is where we get our luminance values for the image to build our initial mask. You can see here where it says Control 2. We press Control Alt 2, just a clever way of just making that selection. If we want to make a selection for that luminance value, we could just press Control and click on that RGB, and that's going to make a selection for all of the luminance value in the image. The same, we can also do this. If we press Control Alt and 2, that is a way that we can hop into there without having to control click on this RGB channel. So if you're working on, you're going to see me do this. So, and I'm getting glossy eyes already and I love it because this is a topic that's just like, it's kind of like, oh man, how do you teach this one? You know, like, it's like, I want to rip my eyeballs out for you. <laughs> um, but you'll see my method here in a second, okay? So by pressing control alt to at any time, you can grab the luminance value as you edit, which is a really important thing to understand. If you're writing notes down about how to make a luminosity mask, and you don't want to venture into channels, just kind of forget that for a couple minutes, okay? Because I'm going to show you the Blake way, and it doesn't involve channels. Again, it might not be the traditional thing, and I'm ready to go to social media for you on that. But <clears throat> if we press Control and click on that RGB, we get a traditional luminosity mask. If we were to come down here and click on this mask icon at the bottom, that mask icon is going to create an alpha channel at the bottom that is essentially the luminance value. So we can actually call this highlights, because it's going to be the highlights. Okay. On the flip side, if we want the shadows, how do we get the shadows? Well, now we've got the highlight channel. We need to just know the hotkey to invert a selection, which is Control, Shift, and I. That will invert the selection. So now if we make a mask for that, we now have shadows. And we can see that by the mask. It's kind of hard because I'm using a gradient at this point. So you're looking at a gradient and you're looking at a gradient mask on top of a gradient mask. When we start getting into image editing, you'll understand. But what I want to show you here is just 
the pixel values that are being selected, especially now when we look at shadows, it looks like things are inverted. But that's because this mass that we've created, this is the portion that's gonna be affecting because that's the white part, okay? It's white transitioning into that black. Now the traditional method to doing, tra to, to doing traditional luminosity masking is essentially to make six of these masks for each one. So one for your six for your highlights, six for your midtones, six for your shadows. And if you want to get even crazier, you can do eight to 10. You can do 15 if you want, as long as that data is available in there. But in order to make those masks, if we were to go and control click on that RGB channel, now how do we make a lesser selection for our highlights? Well, we do that by making that selection and intersecting it with the actual highlights. Have I lost you yet? Please say yes, okay? Because I want you to realize how convoluted this is. We press Control Shift Alt and then click on the highlights and then make another mask. This is essentially highlights. If I could spell, my cursor is getting in the way. It's highlights two, okay? So this highlight two selection is actually a smaller selection of highlights or getting closer and closer and closer to your lightest light areas in the image. Almost to, and you keep doing this. So now, again, we'd intersect this selection. We'd press Control, Shift, Alt, click on Highlights 2. Notice how the selection gets smaller and smaller and smaller. We could change this. We can make a mask here. Call this Highlights 3. Okay? I really butchered that one, but we're just going to keep going. <laughs> press Control, Shift, Alt, and then click on that one. And we're, again, lessening the selection that we're creating from these highlights. And it's that Control Shift Alt and E or Command Shift Option E thing, or not? That's that's to make a stamp, but Command Shift Option Click. You know, it's like I was. I say this, and I think on all my Creative Live classes. But if you're ever curious about if Photoshop can do something, and you're working in a certain area, and you're not sure if it can do something else in that area, press Control and do it. Press Alt and do it. Press Shift and do it. Press Control Shift and do it. Press Alt Shift and do it. Press Control Shift Alt and do it. And then it'll do something different at every given time. But try to find the actual hotkey for that, you're never going to do it. So you just do it by like trial and error. I'm like, oh, I can make a selection? Well, how can I intersect that selection with the selection of the selection? Well, let me try control shift off select. Yeah, OK, you got it. So what, what I'm trying to get at here is just to show you the traditional way of building these luminosity masks so that you can continue to do this. If you press Control, Shift, Alt, um, Command, Shift, Option, and then clicked, it would continue to make smaller and smaller highlight selections by what you're intersecting it with with those highlight selections. There's a couple reasons why I don't like this way. Number one, we're playing in channels, okay? Now channels are great because if you go over to layers, those channels don't exist there. But anytime you wanna get one of those masks, you gotta go over to your channels, you gotta control click on that channel, you gotta pull up that mask, make another mask, and it's just, it becomes like this, like you spend more time trying to find the luminosity mask that you need than actually doing anything with your photograph, okay? So there is an easier way to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these because what happens with, what happens when you have all these channels in here as well is those channels actually take up a lot of space within your image. So if you save this as a PSD document with all those channels that you built just for making these masks that you may or may not ever use, now you got this big old file for what? You put two layers on there, it's two gigs and Photoshop's screaming at you not to save me ever again. So I don't typically like the channels method. I like the rudimentary kind of Blake method. And I don't know if that can be coined or anything like that. Maybe, I don't know. But <laughs> so typically what I'll do with that is I can still make that luminosity mass selection because what's that hotkey that we talked about in the very beginning of this? Control Alt 2 or Command Option 2 on a Mac. Control Alt 2. I'm not even in channels and it's already making a luminosity mask for that RGB value or that RGB channel. And let's not even get into the midtones. To make your midtones mask, you have to you have to you have to intersect, you have to subtract your highlights mask from your shadows mask, and it's just yeah, let's just, let's just leave that one to the pros, so they say. So what we're, what we're going to do with this is now that I've got that selected, I need something that's going to create a mask. Well, you see my little quote over there, curves adjustment. It's my favorite tool. I always make a curves adjustment layer. It's just my go-to. It's like that's that's my jam, you know. So I'm going to click on the adjustments and just make a curves adjustment layer. Because I already had a selection, it's going to make a mask for that curve within that luminosity value. Cool? I'm going to teach you a couple of cool things about masks at this point, is that we've got that luminosity mask selection. 
we can make a modification to this mask just like we would make a modification to anything else in Photoshop. So we can modify that mask with Gaussian blurs. We can modify that mask with curves. We can modify that mask with levels. So how you're going to see that this is so much easier is that if we click on that mask and we go to image, and we go to adjustments, and we go to levels, I now have a levels adjustment that is going to make this mask look different. Let me do something a little bit um, easier for you to see first. I'm going to double click on this curves adjustment layer. And in this curves adjustment layer, I'm going to click the color overlay. And the reason why I do this is I'm going to make this magenta. And that's not because I want to blow your eyeballs out with the color magenta, but it's because the color magenta doesn't typically exist even in the real world, unless maybe you're in like the 1970s with clothing or something like that. But um, even looking around this room, there's nothing in this room right now that is actually that color magenta, right? So if I were to take a picture in this room, knowing that there's nothing in this room that's that color magenta, if I want to see what my masks look like, magenta is going to be my best color for that. Now, I'm in something called layer styles. Well, the layer styles, that is the, what tells me what's happening within this layer. If we come up here to the blending options, that's telling me the things of like what blend mode I'm in, what opacity I'm in, what's happening with this layer. So we can actually make this layer have that magenta color overlay on it. It's not making our image magenta. Don't, don't be afraid, OK? It's just showing us what our mask looks like at this point. Have you ever wondered if you could just see a really good copy of that mask? Sometimes we go into something called quick mask mode. But then have you ever edit in quick mask mode, and then you try to do something else, and like Photoshop's like, bah, you're in quick mask mode. You're in quick mask mode. Er, er. It's like, OK, well, let me just see what this looks like without having to go into quick mask mode. Again, one of my kind of trademarks. So we'll press OK. So now, if I click on this mask, this, this actual mask that's on this curves adjustment layer, I can minimize what this is actually affecting. And I can do that by going up to image, going to adjustments, and going to levels. So quick little tidbit on levels. Levels are controlled by your, your shadow areas of what you're telling it to, to work with, your highlight areas of what you're telling it to work with, and the midtone areas of that object, right? So if a mask is essentially made up of contrast, it's what we're talking about with luminosity masking here. It's made up of white values. It's made up of black values and midtone values in between. We can use levels to dictate how big our mask is. See how, what you'll see is I can drag this over from the left and start introducing more black into that mask, which means that because I'm introducing more black into this mask, it's restricting how much that mask can actually affect which is a little bit different than going into the background of channels, making six different selections, because now I get the pure power to adjust this mask however I want, especially because I can then also go into the midtones of that and push the midtone value of that more towards the shadows or more towards the highlights to get even more out of that mask. Now, you could do the same thing with the traditional luminosity mask selection, but what this allows me to do is it says, OK, you want a luminosity mask, Blake? Go ahead, make it. Control two, you got it. Now you want to refine it, pop a levels adjustment on there. What do you want? Doing it on this gradient, it's kind of like, okay, awesome. You're not really showing me anything, Blake. It's just, you know, data. But what I suggest is when I stay up late at night, which happens a lot, that's my experimentation time. That's the time that I set aside for me to play around with. And I've got tons of graphics that look like this. I mean, I'm a dork when it comes to Photoshop. My wife goes to bed, I'm like, yes, let's go. Game on. <laughs> it's time to go play. And I'll pull up these graphs, and I'll pull up a tool I've never used before, and I'll see how that tool works on um, that graph, because this is essentially everything that would be in an image. You can try to pull up a test image and say, well, this image of, let's say, your dog is always the perfect image to run a test on. But not necessarily, because do you know what the highlight value actually is in that picture of your dog? Or do you know what the shadow actually is in that picture of your dog? Not necessarily. But when I use this, there are no variables. The only variable is how far I push that tool, because I have a constant, and that constant is 0 to 255. So now we're going to break away from that a little bit, and we're going to actually start working on images. So you can see exactly how this works.